Welcome to Libs 1540 and Libs 1810 Student Success for Higher Learning videos. This video is going to talk to you about citing and referencing. And citing and referencing is a very important skill to have while you're in college. When you are writing your assignments or your essays, you're often expected in body paragraphs to include expert knowledge to support your ideas. This shows that you've done your research and the experts support your opinion. So why do you need to use other sources in your assignments? <clears throat> These extra sources support your ideas, they show you've done the research, and it shows that your theories are in line with what the experts have to say. So when do you cite and reference? And what is citing and referencing? We'll get into the mechanics of citing and referencing in a few minutes in this slide, or in this slideshow. But when we use other people's words, ideas, visuals, and graphics, when we're using other people's statistics, when we're using facts that can be argued, we need to make sure that we have an in-text citation telling the reader where the information is from, as well as a reference on our references page so that the reader can find all the information that you found originally. However, we do not need to cite and reference common knowledge. And common knowledge could be something like everyone knows that the Titanic sunk on its first voyage. However, not everyone knows how many people were rescued, nor how many lifeboats were on the Titanic. So therefore, we would need to cite this information and reference it. If knowledge is new to you, but you expect your reader to know about it, you still need to cite and reference this so that the, the reader knows that you have done your research and that you fully understand the topic you're discussing. So what is the difference between citing and referencing? Well, citing is done in the body of your essay or assignment. So it's done in text, and this is why we call it in-text citation. The citing also tells the reader that the information you've included is not your own idea or your own words. It's a little flag saying to the reader, hello, I have found this information from an expert. Now referencing, on the other hand, is done at the end of the assignment, and you need to create a separate page for your references. And referencing gives the readers all the information that they need in order to find your original source. So if they want to read it, they can go back and find the information themselves. Now, when we're using other people's words, we can paraphrase, we can summarize, or we can quote. But as, as long as we're using another person's ideas, we still need to make sure that we cite and reference. So how can you use other people's words? When we're quoting, we're using somebody's exact words. Now paraphrasing, we're using somebody's idea, but you're using your own words and sentence structure, and it's often about the same length as the original is. When you're summarizing for an assignment or an essay, you want to make sure that you're only using or that you're, only, you're reducing the other person's ideas down to 10 to 15 percent of the original. And you're using your own words and sentence structures, but you're using somebody else's ideas. For each of these, you do need an in-text citation and you need to reference your source. And here are some examples. So you can see that by quoting, I have used the exact words of the original author, and they are in quotation marks. 
And then it, after the quotation, you can see the in-text citation. And in this case, an in-text citation includes the author's last name, the date, and the page or paragraph number. However, I'm citing a website here, and there is no author. So I am using the organization's name, Purdue University. And I've also included the Writing Lab Home section, paragraph one, because there are many different web pages on the Purdue University site. And in order to make sure that my reader can find the information, I need to include this heading as well. Now, how do you find the information to know how to cite and reference? Well, if you go to Conestoga College's library homepage, you will see a number of boxes, and the one that you need is the writing and citing. So click on that. This writing and citing tab or button will take you to Conestoga College's web or site for a number of different services. However, what you really need to focus on is the APA at Conestoga tab. At Conestoga College, we use APA. It has been modified slightly, and thus we use APA at Conestoga. When you click on that button, it will take you to the APA site, which we'll get to in just a moment. However, another thing that I would like to point out is that there is writing support available through the library and you can book individual writing appointments and they can help you with your citing and referencing if you are having difficulty. Now, when you click on the APA at Conestoga button on the left, <clears throat> this is the, the site that will show up. The first thing that we want to look at is the citations in text, or what we also call in-text citations. One of the things that you will notice is that it includes the format, how to cite personal communications, secondary sources, etc. There are a couple of different ways to do this, however, we're going to just discuss the basics today. So when you click on the citations in text box, it will take you to this link. And you see that at the top we have the basic citation formulas about authors, about dates, page, and paragraph numbers. There's also information about citing web documents, citing streaming videos or motion pictures, citing personal communications, etc but we are going to look at the basic formula. So when you are writing an in-text citation, the parenthetical method is probably the easiest to use if you're just starting. And after you've used your quote, your paraphrase, or your summary, in brackets at the end of this information, you'll have the author's last name, the date, and the page or paragraph number. And for the page, it's just P period and then the page number. If you look down though at group author without abbreviation, so what I showed you with Purdue University, you're going to use the name of the organization, the date, and in this case, slide 11, it was taken from a PowerPoint slide. If you don't know who the author is, <clears throat> then what you do is you use the source title. So it could be the book or web page title, or it could be a magazine or newspaper article title. And then finally, if you don't know the date, then you would put in N period, D period, which means no date. So once again, we'll go through the, the formula, the basic formula. You have a bracket, the author's last name, a comma, the year, a comma, 
and then the page or paragraph number. If it's page, it's P period, and then the number. If it's a paragraph, it's P-A-R-A -A period, and then the number of the paragraph. When we are citing websites, if you are citing one paragraph, you will notice that we use the author's last name, we put in the date again, and then the paragraph number. If we're citing more than one paragraph, you'll notice again the author's last name, the date, and then paras, P-A-R-A-S, period, which indicates it's more than one, and then the numbers, so paragraphs five and six in this case, or five to six. If you are on a web page that has different headings or even different segments, again, you're going to put the author's last name, the date, the heading title, and then the paragraph number. If you're citing streaming videos such as YouTube, you'll notice that, again, you use the author's last name, the date, and then you include the timestamp of when that particular part of information started. You don't need to worry about when it ends, <clears throat> just have the beginning. And again, you'll notice here that they've got the streaming videos, they've got films, the TV episode, podcast episode, or webinar, an online lecture. So all of these sources can also be used when you are citing and referencing and writing your paper. Occasionally, as we're reading, we may find that the information we really like is actually from another author. So it might be in your textbook, but they're quoting someone else. So we call these secondary sources. So for example, it may be in your psychology textbook, and it could be a quote by Maslow. So your psychology textbook will have the quotation in there, and if you like it, you can use it in your paper. But then what you do is you have the original authors and the publication date. And then you have the authors from the source that you are using, the year and the page number again. Or if it's a, a web document with no page numbers, then you use the paragraph number. It's important to remember that if you cite a source, you must have the corresponding reference in your references page at the end of the assignment. If you have a reference, you must have a citation. So remember that these two are linked together. And then in order to figure out how to reference, again, you go back to the APA at Conestoga site through the library. And you'll notice that there is a box for the reference list. When you click on that box, this is the screen that you will see. When you are referencing information, you'll notice that it is far more exact and there's a lot more information in it because, like I said before, this is what your readers will use in order to find the information that they need if they want to read your paper. So again, you have the author, you have the year, the title, and the source. So where you got the information from. <clears throat> the references, as I said, must be on a separate page after the body of your paper. And we will talk a little bit more about formatting in just a moment. Now we talked about the sources and we can either have a DOI or we can have a URL. A DOI you will find on documents that are often in the library's databases. It is used to keep track of documents 
just like in the library with books, they have letters and numbers on them in order for people to be able to find them easily. So the DOI is the same idea. Of course, the URL is from the internet. So when you are looking for articles and you're in the library databases, look to see if it has a DOI number because you'll need that at the end of your reference. If there's not a DOI, then you'll use the URL. So in order to get into the library, you need to log in. And of course, most of us are off campus when we're doing any research. So you'll need to use your student ID number. And the PIN number is the last four digits of this ID number. And this lasts as long as you are a student at Conestoga. So when you go into the library's web page and you do a search, you can often find many different articles. Here is an example of an article that I found. If you want to see all of the information with the author's full names and the date of publication, sometimes you can find it at the top right of the page. Other times you can't, so you need to click on the detailed record that is in the top left-hand corner. This will give you the information you need in order to complete a references page. Now this article does have a DOI and it's right at the very top, so it's very easy to find. However, if there's not a DOI, then what you need to do is include the URL. In order to include the appropriate URL, on the right-hand side, in the margin, at the bottom, you will see a link. If you click that, that is a permalink, and that will give you the, the proper URL to use when you are referencing your documents. If you use the URL at the top of the page, your reader will not be able to find the information because that is a one-time only URL. So going back to our reference list information, when you click on the reference list <clears throat> box, you will get the different types of sources that you can use when you are writing your document. And unfortunately, each of these has various different elements that are unique to the type of communication or the type of source you're using. So do make sure that you double check your reference page with this, this information. I'm going to go through a few but I want you to remember that there are many, many different elements that are required depending on the source. So you should go to APA at Conestoga to help you with this. And just one quick caution as well. If you are using Microsoft Word or another word processing program and it offers you the opportunity to use referencing software within it, please note that not all of the information will be contained that you need. So if you do use Microsoft Word, you will have to go back and double check and add the necessary information that you need. So you notice with journal articles, the basic formula is the author's last name and initial, the year of publication, the title of the article, the title of the journal, which is in italics, a volume number and an issue number, and the page numbers, and the DOI. If the document that you are using from the library does not have a DOI, you do not have to include the URL. If you're using a website document, you must include the URL. You'll notice the examples that are here. So we have Shipley M 2002, 
the title fibromyalgia. And then you'll notice that it's rheumatology to medicine. And those are written in italics because those are the title of the of the journal. And then we have the volume, which is 30, and the issue, which is 9. The volume usually indicates the year that it is published. And this is in terms of the start of the journal. So it may be 1, or it may be 2, or it may be 3. So the first year of publication, the second year of publication, the third year of publication. Here we have 30, so this is in its 30th year of publication. And then the issue is how many times it comes out in the year and which number it is. So if it's number one, it came out in the beginning, the first of the year. If it's number two, it came out second. So in this case, we see that it's number nine. And then pages 81 to 84, but again, you'll notice that there's no P or PP for this. And then the DOI, and you'll notice that it starts with HTTPS. So you need to include all of that information. Here's an example with a URL. And again, you'll notice that the URL is at the very bottom. It does not necessarily have to be at the very bottom, but you do need to make sure that it has the hyperlink. Streaming videos, again, as we looked at earlier, when we are doing our citations, we need to make sure we have the basic information in there, such as what the timestamp is. When we are looking at the formula, we need the author's last name and initial, a username if it's available, the year, the month, and the day that it was put up or published, the title of the video, <clears throat> and then in square brackets we write video and the name of the site along with the URL. And you will see that examples are given on the, on the APA homepage. When we're referencing websites, again, we need the author's last name, the initial, the year, the month, and the day, if it's available, the title of the web document, the name of the organization, and the URL. So you'll notice in the top example, it's from Conestoga College, and it's a Dr. Tibbetts President's Welcome. So it's Tibbetts, comma, J, period, then space, bracket, N, period, D, period, bracket, period, and again, ND stands for no date. The President's Welcome, which is in italics, and then Conestoga College, and there is the URL. For websites that are produced by a company or a corporation and no particular author has been named, then you are going to use the name of the organization, and again, the year, the month, the day, the title of the web document, and the URL. So those are the basics of citing and referencing. And I wanted to show you a few little extra things on the APA at Conestoga webpage because there are extra resources available that students are often not aware of. So when you click on the resources and template, you see that there is a sample paper and a paper template. The sample paper shows you exactly how to do your referencing. It also will show you how to cite within the text. There's also in the, the, the paper, 
the paper template, the references are already set up and formatted for you. So with the paper template, all you have to do is download. The whole paper has been formatted for you and all you have to do is put in your own information. And again, as I said earlier, if you're in the library's homepage and you click on the Writing and Citing button, you can book an appointment for an online writing session. So by using the Citing and Referencing and using the APA at Conestoga Site, you're practicing academic integrity and you're also showing your reader that you know the about what you have written about. You have become a mini expert in a way. So when you're writing your, your assignments, your papers, your essays, your exams, don't forget the importance of writing and citing, of citing and referencing and doing it properly. See you in class.